Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. So I'm excited to bring you a store haul video tonight. We have 11 bottles to show you. If you remember, I bought four Maker's Mark cast strengths and uh, put them into one of my little three liter barrels and I've been aging it for about three, four weeks now. Poured a little bit of that out of one of the barrels, gave it a shot, or out of the barrel, give it a shot. Not bad, I can't complain. I'm not quite sure it's up to a William Leroux Weller yet, but maybe someday it'll get there. It definitely tastes older than a regular, ca uh, regular Maker's Mark cast strength but it's not ready yet. So we're gonna leave it, we're gonna let it keep going. But let's dive into the, what we've been finishing off. So first off tonight, killed, we killed a Bell Mead Straight Reserve Bourbon. This is a Nelson Greenbrier product. It's actually pretty good. I put this upstairs uh, in the dining room in our little cabinet up there and uh, went to town on it for, for about a week, maybe a little more, and I really enjoyed it. It was much better than I remembered uh, the first pour and I wanted to clear some space on the shelves down here. Well, next up is a Jamie kill. She killed this the other day, and this is a Metcalf's Vermont Maple Bourbon. She loved this. This is probably her favorite maple bourbon at this point. And fortunately, we have one in the mail that we're supposed to pick up tomorrow. Uh, Escobar sent us another one down. We pay, we pay for it, so you'll see that in another uh, store haul video down the road. But uh, now Jamie's having to figure out a way to survive without having this. Jamie's been a busy girl. Next up is a Bull Run. This is American Straight Whiskey, 13-year-old American Straight Whiskey infused with real maple syrup. Now this uh, Bull Run Distilling out of Oregon, this was sent to us by Cody and Erica, and this was fantastic. I I really, really like this. This is one of the better maple bourbons that I've had. This and the Taconic are probably my two favorite maple bourbons. I helped a little bit on this one, not much, but just a teeny bit. But Jamie, she, Jamie worked hard on this one and, and she finished it. Uh, don't know if we're gonna get another one. If we can, we will. Now next up here, we have a Barrel Seagrass. Now this did not last long at all here in the speakeasy. When Jamie and I went apple picking down in Charlottesville at Carter Mountain, this was picked up that day and we finished it really pretty quickly in probably less than two months, which is pretty quick in speakeasy terms. Now this may look familiar because in the uh, getting a George T. Stag video that I posted, this is actually what I took and the group worked on it, me and Joe and I think the other couple other guys had some pours of this and worked out pretty well. This was really, really good. The apricot really comes through on the finish and it's a very solid ball. I will be buying another one of these uh, very, very soon. Now my next two bottles, I'm really, really sad to see go. These actually, were killed off during my uh, our Halloween special that Jamie and I did. However, uh, you know, I did want to actually show them to you guys that we did, you know, for those of you that didn't watch that live stream, we did kill them off. Uh, we killed off our Elmer T. Lee. I have no more Elmer T. Lee in the speakeasy and probably won't have any in here for a long time. This is really, really hard to get in the state of Virginia. They release them once a year and they're out for about a week and you just have to really get lucky and work hard to get this one. So it's really sad to see this one go. This is a fantastic, fantastic bottle. Definitely worth every penny of retail. Now, the last bottle kill to show you guys tonight is this Michter's 10 bourbon. This is the first Michter's 10 single barrel bourbon that I ever had on the shelves of this Speakeasy. It was fantastic. It was the best Michter's 10 bourbon I've had. I've had pours from several other bottles at restaurants and whatnot, and this was the best one. So very, very sad to see this one go. Killed it off in the Halloween live stream. I'm definitely gonna miss this bourbon. Hopefully you can find a new one very, very soon. All right, so that's everything that we killed off in the speakeasy. And it, those are some really, really good bottles. Sad to see those go. However, I'm extremely excited to bring to you the bottles tonight, 11 of them. Let's go. First off is almost a joke. So Keith up in New York saw this and he thought of me 1911, so he sent it to me. The reason this is funny is for those of you that don't uh, aren't familiar, there is actually a handgun model called a 1911, uh, and it's a 45 caliber or whatever. Anyway, not getting into gun stuff. The point is, is there's a 1911, and I've, you know, talked about 1911s not as part of this, but for years and years and years with friends and and whatnot. And so 1911 is something that comes to my lips very very easily because of interest in firearms. That said, several times during live streams, I have referred to Old Forester 1910 as 1911. I've referred to Old Forester 1920 as 1911. Made all kinds of terrible references to 1911 just simply because I don't, my brain doesn't work well. Anyway, Keith found this up in New York. He has, he was, was in a store. He just saw this on the shelf, bought it, sent it to me. The joke is, is funny, but what's even funnier is that this is actually not bad. We opened it up on a live stream and it's really pretty good. I, I was pretty happy with it. It was not very expensive and uh, Keith just gifted it to me uh, as part of the joke and it's fantastic. Thank you, Keith. And and I will try not to call 1910 from Old Forest or 1911 anymore because now there actually is a bottle of 1911 in the speakeasy. All right, next up, we're going into the world of scotch. 
Now, this particular one, I was extremely excited. I wasn't looking for it, didn't know anything about it, stumbled across it, read about it, and I was in love. This is the Balvenie, and it's called The Week of Pete. So the legend goes that the master distiller at the Balvenie found a week on the calendar that was not booked up, where they had an opportunity to do, just do some experiments. So he wanted to actually dive in and do a peated scotch. So the Balvani is not an Isla scotch, it's not an island scotch. It is not normally peated at all. And he wanted to play around with peat. So he did this. This is a 14 year old Balvenie peated scotch. Fairly rare. I really, really enjoy the Balvenie in general. And I also really, really like uh, peated scotches, Isla scotches, island scotches that have peat added. I'm, I down with it, I dig it. And so he, they made this, I saw it and I couldn't believe it. So. It's the story of Ian, Ian Miller using smoke from Speyside Pete for one week of the year. So they did this, it's a special release, and I'm very, very excited to have this on the shelf. All right, so next up tonight, we have another scotch. This is a Dalwini. It's a distiller's edition of it. This is a 15-year-old Dalwini. I've never had a Dalwini, and I've wanted to try one, and this seemed like a good way of getting into it, one that was their distiller's collection, whatever, distiller's edition. So it comes in at 86 proof, double matured Highland single malt scotch whiskey. I mean, there's nothing particularly special other than it's the distiller's edition. And I don't know how that compares to the regular Dalwini, uh, but you know, 15 years seemed interesting to me, a good entrance to this particular line of scotch. So uh, I picked it up, I'm pretty excited to try it and uh, add it to the shelves of the speakeasy. All right, we're done with the scotches, no more scotch. I, I behaved myself and I only bought two. So two out of 11 is not bad, okay? That's it, we're moving on to the bourbons. We got more going on here. This is a horse soldier. This is a horse soldier, small batch, 95 proof. Now this I bought for Veterans Day. I wanted to get some bourbon from, or some whiskey at least, from distilleries that were owned by vets for Veterans Day. So I picked up two. I picked up this one and the next one. This uh, whole surge of small batch. Haven't even opened it yet. Uh, we ended up drinking this other one that I'm about to show you. So I'm pretty excited to have this on the shelves of the speakeasy. I've never had horse soldier before and Veterans Day was a great opportunity for me to snag this and the next bottle. But uh, let's go and talk about the next bottle. And it's another horse soldier. This one is the barrel proof coming in at 122 proof barrel strength. It was really solid. Opened it up, had a couple of pours out of it uh, during the live stream for Veterans Day that we did. And it was a pretty solid performer. I'm pretty happy with it. Tasted a little on the young side. It's not particularly old, but you know, at, at barrel proof, barrel strength, it was, it was pretty solid. So I'm pretty happy about that. All right, now this next bottle, I'm very, very excited to get. This is a bottle of 1792 Bottled and Bond. And what's even better is this is a store pick from Gay's Hops and Schnapps. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, it's a single barrel select from 2021. I don't remember exactly what state this came from, but uh, Logan was gracious enough to hunt this down and get this for me. Sent it to me, I paid him for it. Uh, apologies for the miscommunication on that one, Logan. That was my fault. Uh, however, I do appreciate it. This is one of my favorite 1792s, probably my favorite 1792 except for the 1792 12 year. I used to love the full proof more, but this to me is just like the sweet spot for 1792. I couldn't high, more highly recommend a bottle of 1792 than the Bottled and Bond. So if you haven't tried 1792 Bottled and Bond, give this one a shot. And this is the first 1792 Bottled and Bond store pick that I've ever had. So I'm very, very excited to get this one and give it a shot and see how it compares to the regular one, as well as the other delicious bottles in the 1792 lineup. Up next, got another Blanton's. Uh, this is a small one. This was a 375. The day we got this, uh, Jamie actually went in the store and got one with me. So we ended up with two of them. One of them ended up going into one of our giveaways. I think it was the Veterans Day. We gave this one away uh, to Chuck and it's actually sitting right there. So I owe you that, Chuck. I'm sorry about that. Uh, thank you for patience and I will get that out to you ASAP. But I do have this one now to put on the shelves of the Speakeasy and it's going to get given away. It, it's just, you know, these small ones, uh, they aren't really that particularly meaningful to me. And they make little great giveaways, great gifts. And uh, for, for a lot of you guys, you guys can't get Blanton's at all. And it's not easy here in Virginia. It's just that it does drop probably once a month or so. And it's kind of plentiful if you actually put a little effort into it and you're able to get away from work and get there when store openings happen, then usually you can get pretty lucky and, get, and grab one. So anyway, grab this Blanton's and uh, it's, you know, like I said, it's gonna go to a giveaway, but I'm glad I got it until I can give it to somebody else. All right, now these next two bottles I got from Alan out in California, and I'm very, very excited. He came across these, messaged me, asked if I'd be interested. I said, heck yeah. So what these are is these are Redwood Empire's first, well, I don't know if they're, they're technically their first, but the first that I've ever had using their own distillate. So this is a Redwood Empire bottled and bond 
rye whiskey, and then a Redwood Empire bottled and bond uh, Grizzly Beast bourbon. So the rye they call Rocket Top after a tree in California that is shaped like a bottle rocket. And they call the bourbon bottled and bond the Grizzly Beast after two trees that kind of grew together in Yosemite National Park. Anyway, uh, kind of interesting. I like the way Redwood Empire operates. I like what they're doing. And I'm very excited to open these up and try them. They were kind of on the spendy side. I think they were running around $99, $89, $99 a piece for barely bottled and bond. So hopefully they're pretty good. I've seen kind of some mostly positive reviews for it, but it is still kind of expensive, but it is their first real distillate that they've done without using source to juice. And to me, that's really cool. And I'm glad to have these and I definitely want to try them out very soon. So up next, bottle 10, here we go. This is a 1792 12 year. And I'm extremely excited to get another one of these. Uh, you may know that in a recent live stream, I gave away a 1792 as part of our, our kind of nightly giveaway for that live stream. The only reason I did that is because this one was in the mail. And I it's I do have one on the shelf, a 1792 uh, 12 year on the shelf. The first one I had, the first one I ever got. And then this will be my hopefully second one that I open as the replacement. So a huge thank you to Jason for picking this up for me. I really, really appreciate uh, you helping me get this one. And I'm more than happy to have this in the speakeasy. It is a backup, but I'm very, very excited about it. All right, last up tonight, bottle 11. And this one, I have nobody to thank but Chris. Chris, thank you, sir. You got this for me. I paid you for it, but you found it and you got me, got it in my hands. This is a Wild Turkey Master's Keep one. Some of you are going to say, David, we've seen this before. You have during a live stream. Some of this stuff I get so excited about in live streams, I'll, I'll pop them open and we'll talk about them or drink them. And that's what happened with this one. This one has had a decent amount taken out of it already because it's really pretty good. Is it worth the price? It's hard to say. It's fantastic. It's really, really good, but the price is really high. I paid like 170 ish for it. One something, some, something right in there. Don't remember exactly, but Chris, thank you so much for helping me get this. And this is very, very cool because it is one of the more valuable bottles and it's participating in our most valuable tasting series that Jamie and I are working on right now, which is pretty cool. And to have this on the shelves of the Speakeasy, another, again, it's another Master's Keep product from Wild Turkey. And it is gorgeous bottle, gorgeous presentation, a fantastic spirit on the inside. That said, thank you so much for tuning into the video tonight. I can't tell you how happy I am that you did. Thank you to all the Patreons for your continued support. If you ended up liking this video, smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And until next time, find a bottle you love.